I personally think that climate change is the single biggest issue facing our generation today and that we all should be doing nothing but working on that. My role at Zero Avia primarily is to ensure that the company's operations are funded. Uh, so that consists of going to investors to raise money for them for the future, but also once they've given us money, it's maintaining relationships with them, making sure that they're happy with how we're spending the money, and so hopefully they give us more money in the future. So I joined Zero Avia from the finance and investment world, and I did not work in aviation previously. So through my job at Zero Avia, I've learned a lot about the aviation industry, from how engines are made, to how they're sold, and to how airlines think about their purchasing decisions, which has been really exciting and really interesting. But in addition to that, I've also learned a lot about the function that I'm in, finance, and how to do that in a company that's always changing, always growing, whose funding needs are always evolving, and who is just growing in terms of its footprint. I think what's really helped us is being very results oriented in how we work. So ever since we conducted the first flight of our hydrogen system in September 2020, the dialogue around us has completely changed. Players started taking us really seriously, airlines want to work with us, airframe manufacturers want to partner with us, and the more of those partnerships we have, the more interest there is. So it's really a snowball effect once you get the ball moving. So a pivotal moment in my career at Zero Avia was closing our Series A funding round in November 2020. This was the first institutional funding round that we closed and one that took us a really long time to bring together. We had to work through the first wave of COVID to make it happen, which meant that we couldn't meet with investors in person, the aviation industry was in crisis, and there was generally a lot of skepticism about what we were doing. So we had to work really hard and educate investors to convince them that our approach made sense, but also that we were the company best place to execute. And therefore it was such a relief, but also so exciting to be able to announce that we closed 20 plus million dollars and we had the funding that we needed to bring our vision to life. When you want to bring a new technology to market, you have to understand that it will be three, five, maybe even 10 years before your company is generating profit that you can use to reinvest back into the company and fund your operations. So during that time, you have to find external sources of capital that you can use to cover your costs. As when you're a very small company, typically you go to the venture capital community who invests in a big number of startups because they only really expect one or two companies in their portfolio to survive and to deliver huge returns. As your company matures and you have a product that you are either already bringing to market or are right on the cusp, you go to a different set of investors that are not expecting those huge returns, but they're expecting more predictable returns from a larger set of companies in their portfolio. Part of the reason I decided to work at Zeravia specifically amongst many other climate technology startups is that I realized that in my personal footprint, aviation is the single biggest contributor and I can go vegan, I can not buy any new clothes and do all these other things, which I do happen to do, but ultimately that does not move the needle as compared to my flight footprint. So I have tried to actually reduce how much I fly for the, for the time being, because unfortunately Zero Avia's technology is not available today, uh, but ultimately I really want to find a way to fly that is zero emission. One of the really exciting perks about working at Zero Avia is that you can take your pilot license at our facility in Campbell and our other facilities in the US as well. So I've benefited from that. So far I've done two lessons, so I'm still quite far away from actually getting a license, but it's been really exciting to see how a plane works and get a more personal connection to what it's like to fly one. So fun fact is I don't actually have a driving license, so it's possible that I might get a pilot license before I have a car driving license. I actually found flying a lot easier than I thought it would be. So, so far it's looking promising. I think it's really important to have a diverse workforce because we're working on something that's really difficult and it's new. And the more different perspectives we have on that, the faster we will get to the answer. And I think in aviation in particular, it's important to make sure that women have a seat at the table because so far women are not very well represented at all the different levels of an organization. At Zeravia, we're trying to do that through three things. Uh, one is by um, having more female leaders at the top that can act as role models for women who are thinking about joining the company or already in the company and thinking about how their career might progress. The second is by making sure that we have a very fair and transparent interview process and that we're looking for candidates, sometimes in the less obvious places, to make sure that we're getting a really diverse pool of candidates to choose from. And finally, it's to actually feed that pipeline of candidates by engaging with schools and universities and inspiring young girls and young women to pursue a career in science, engineering, aviation, and other adjacent fields. Once I started working on climate change about 10 years ago and realized the complexity and the magnitude of the problem that we're trying to solve, I realized that everybody, regardless of what industry they come from and what skills they have, has something to add and should start working on that as soon as possible.